Welcome to All-State Arena, the arch rival Rockford Icehawks here, and this is who will start against them in this one tonight. The Wolf Stars and Scratches are presented by Illinois Bone and Joint Institute. Illinois Bone and Joint Institute. Move better, live better. Visit IBJI.com. Pat Canoni on the left side, Alexander Bolduc on in the middle, uh, Ty Ratty on the right side, uh, Canoni also a centerman. That'll be interesting to see what they do with that group. Doug Janik and Mark Kandari start on the blue line. Jake Allen, the nod in net. Scratches tonight, Brett Ponich, David Shields, Derek Nesbitt, Cody Beach, Brent Regner, Joe Corvo, and Sebastian Wanstrom. Tonight's goaltender matchup is sponsored by Allstate. Allstate, Chicago's own good hands. Jake Allen goes to the Wolves despite dropping back-to-back -back games. He has nine wins in his last 13 starts for Chicago. At the other end, Kent Simpson. He has been the backup. This is just his second start in the last 12 games for the Ice Odds. He played March 7th against Milwaukee. He's tapped in 27 of 35. Mm. Here, Mark Bouchard heading off. Mills a shot. He missed the mark. That's what Bouchard does so well. Boy, he draws attention. He's got great hands. And that was a perfect feed. Just a miscue on the shot. And that's the type yeah. of situations you cannot have occur. You've got to be stronger defensively in your own zone. Bouchard on a five-game point streak for Rockford, 96 and white, tied up in front of his own bench. Gets some help from Mills, but it's turned over. Scooped up by Eckhoy, dropped off, cut it, cut. they score! Joel Edmondson opens up the scoring, 1-0 Chicago. You could talk about Pierre-Marc Bouchard, and then you could talk about Keith the coin. Two very similar players. Smaller in stature, but really know the game well. Good vision, excellent hands, and they make plays, and that's what they're paid to do. And it starts with the coin. Here he is, penetrates his own. Nice drop pass, tractal. What a feed across. I love the fact because I can only drive into the nest. Watch the middle of the net here. You got a man driving through the middle of the ice, and that draws the attention. And because of that, it was an Andronov. Because of that, that opens up Edmondson's area. Crackers feet perfect and uh, somewhat of an empty net. 540 to go in this opening period. Going back to that four minute segment of the Wolves after they killed off the yeah. Rockford power play. Some pretty impressive passing. It really was. And, uh, Here's a coin hitting up. A good setup for a finish. 2 0 Chicago. I'm glad I did not continue on with uh, the thought after your question because I just had a feeling again. And it's uh, one of those games where uh, these guys are being creative. They're skating a lot better than we saw last weekend. There's no doubt about that. And the fact is, when you do that, you back the fences up. And look where they were, Rockford. They're already halfway in their own zone when the Wolves were able to enter it. And that's just a super feat again by a coin who tonight is also an, a, a magician. He's made some <laughs> wonderful passes and uh, could have three or four assists in this first period alone. Two assists for a coin. It's the assists on Cracknell's 10th of the year at 14:31. Sergey Andronov, who Billy said did the dirty work in the first Chicago goal, gets the second helper on the second Chicago tally. Welcome addition. Good power for it. A couple of lucky folks last week, eh? Winning the big one. Yeah, how about that? Splitting $400 million. Bullduke walks in, shoots off the shoulder. It's a rebound. They score. Ty Ratty's got 25. What a pass by Canoni. And how about the Red Sea parting for <laughs> Alexander Bolduc? He had the puck and he was flat footed. He looks up and he has the ability to walk to that and just rifle one. Canoni gets the rebound and Simpson, there's no chance with that hard high shot that he's going to handle this and secure it. It comes off his body. Canoni turns around with a backhander right on the tape of Ratty and he has six by four. That was the first face-off loss of the game for Mark McNeil. And the Wolves make a pay. It was five for five in the first period. As was Hanson for the Wolves. And Ty Ratty leads the team with 25 goals. Six and a half to go in the second. Trying to snap a two-game slide. Let's a real two-game slide. Go. Billy, you gotta go all the way back to mid-January, the last time the Wolves Dropped two in a row. Yeah, hard to believe in, the, in this building also, the fact that they had that 17 game point streak. Oh, they're gonna fight. Mullane finally answers Selleck, who was begging for Mullane to drop him. Selleck, a couple huge rights landing. Mullane fights Oof. back, takes another one in the process. The massage working for Eric Selleck, his second fight with the Wolves.
Nope. And now he's getting jumped by Nightingale. Oh. And everyone coming towards this. Great job by Al Stensland to break it up. Now this will be interesting. Nightingale here should be tossed. Absolutely. Third man in to an altercation. So, boy, is he ever getting thrown into the belly box. But that should be the call. And the wrong one. Both Rockford players in the Wolves penalty box. Yeah. <laughs> Selleck will go to the Rockford one. And as you mentioned last broadcast, right. he's used to that because he used to play for San Antonio. In the last and game. tried to attempt to go to the last one. In the last game, he tried to uh, go into that area, but uh, got told which box to go to. Here is the fight. And Selleck has been feisty all game long. And boy, the knuckles have to be hurting after hitting a lot of wood. Drops down the lane and uh, stumbles around, gets back up, and then Nightingale comes in with his gloves already off uh, from behind on Selleck. Whoa, he landed one there, too, with Al Stinson having a pretty good grab on oh, Eric yeah. Selleck. Yeah. Now, Nightingale sticking up for his teammate. Mullane was being bothered by two Wolves, did not want to originally drop the gloves, but he did something back behind the play that drew the ire. And Eric Selleck finally got him to drop the mitts. And obviously Nightingale did not like that. Yeah. But there's a time and place to do that. That's going to result in a game misconduct and perhaps further discipline from the AHL. You cannot be the third man into a fight. Well, the discussion now with the official and Al Stenslin, who's a supervisor also, uh, it'll be interesting to see what the end result is. And this is when it's a little bit tougher than it used to be. And I mean that because these guys now are used to relying on each other, two referees, and talking uh, to really come to the final answer of a situation like that and to have the vision of what was taking place. So, long discussion here at the penalty box, and we'll see what happens, but the Nightingale should be tossed, at least the third man in. He leads Rockford with 95 penalty minutes, does Jarrett Nightingale. So they do engage. It'll be interesting. I think uh, Al Stenzlin, who's in the middle of that, will have a lot to say on what took place between Selleck and Nightingale and whether uh, if this is a third man in or a, I mean, it is. It's one yeah. guy fought for both situations. And as you, uh, and you can hear the fans, that is the shot that Nightingale gets in after really Selleck is tied up by the linesman. It does bring up an interesting point. Did Nightingale start the fight or did he come over just to yell at him? Right. And I'm sure Selleck uh, didn't mind initially going with him. So that it's been a long discussion between both linesmen now. In fact, Al Senza went back to the opposite side of the ice and the other linesmen came across Alex Dagnon to talk with the official also. So what they do there is he wanted to talk to both, but they want to have a linesman between the benches in case something erupts or starts. So Stenzel had his long talk, first of all, with Binda, and then they took each other's spots. And the continuing conversation seems like it has come to an end, but the referee now talking to the penalty box. And uh, boy, they're still not really 100% sure, I don't think, on their uh, final decision. Well, there is no love lost between these two teams, and the Wolves head to Rockford tomorrow night to take <laughs> on the Ice Hogs at 7 o'clock in an Illinois Lottery Cup contest. Visit ChicagoWolves.com for more information. And we've touched on it before. Ted Dent's team uh, has really dropped in their ranking in the penalty minute totals. Historically, yeah. they've always been among the yeah. AHL leaders. And the game will be at 7 o'clock on the U2 Live. The Ted Dent's team now middle of the pack this year, and that was an area I know that you know he's taken some heat from from other coaches and probably his parent club organization. That hey, but let's play within the rules a little bit more. We don't mind some of the stuff, but we cannot be leading the league in penalty minutes every year. You know, it's not like the old East Coast Hockey League where you, you kind of put the tinfoil on, on the knuckles and did a lot of this for entertainment purposes. And this is a developmental league, and they want guys to develop and play. You know, brand of hockey, not to run around with their heads cut off. So, uh, 
You know, it's an important game for these clubs as we're down to 15 and 13 games, respectively, 13 for Rockford. And, you know, the team that they're vying for position right now, both are losing. Milwaukee Admirals and Rochester. And Rochester, in fact, I think is lost. And they are one point behind the two of those teams. So up on the scoreboard, we do now have a five-minute penalty on the board. I saw Rod Stewart. Jared Nightingale. But Nightingale's still in the penalty box, but that yeah. ind indicates that the Wolves will be heading to the Northwest Community Healthcare Medical Group power play for the first time tonight. And Jeff Miladek, our esteemed statistician, passes over the penalty calls. Huh. Jared Nightingale, two for instigating, five for fighting, and a 10-minute misconduct. It's Selleck getting five for fighting, two for roughing, and Mullane five for fighting. So after all that penalty total, it, add, it, it leads to a five-minute power play for the Wolves. And as mentioned, Northwest Community Healthcare Medical Group is proud to sponsor each Wolf power play tonight. You can find your doctor right by visiting nchmedicalgroup.com. And the uh, players just switched. Selleck uh, skating by the two of them that he tussled with. And run off in the slot area. A crack mower makes that a ratty shot turned away by Simpson. A coin back to Ratty. Ratty to Kadari. Bouncing clock, Kadari moves away from the pressure of Nordstrom. Crack mill to a coin. 2.05 to go in the power play. Ratty, Kadari, one turn for the rebound and drop. Can't do much better as a goaltender. A couple of unbelievable stops for Simpson. But again, with the tightness and the hard and velocity of these shots, he doesn't know where it's going after it hits him. And in, uh, the last pair, right to a point. Better puck movement. Finally, some poor passing early on. This is a nice one-timer. Look at that rebound stop. But the rebound goes all the way to a point. And watch Crack go in front of the net. He gets uh, a little bit tied up, or at least he gets Simpson thinking about him a little bit more, and he can't get up and get across. And the shot by a coin into an empty net. And a nice puck movement eventually. Some poor passing earlier on. And that's such a key on the power play. Got to be better and precise to make these plays happen. Keith the coins, 10th of the season. A power play goal from Andronov and Kadari. Third point of the game for Keith the coins. Second assist for Andronov and Kadari factoring in on the score sheet. He and a coin each now have a dozen points on the NCH Medical Group power play. Point leading the Wolves. Kadari brought over eight points in the power play from the Abbotsford Heat. I just like the fact that Adam Cracko put himself in front of the net and was uh, a big part of the process. Five shots on that first power play. They're now in their second because of the five minute major. First period, the Wolves now two here in the second. The Wolves leading 4-0, two and a half to go in the middle frame. Bobby Shea breaks it up. And ahead, Ross run into by Chorney. Chorney looking for open ice. Davies will take. Left off and now pull the two on one. Pull the shoots, he scores! Two on the power play for the Wolves, 5-0. Now a little bit of a gamble, I think the Hogs trying to get back into this game. Get caught in the Wolves' odd man situation. Nice play as they enter the zone, and what a release this is by Alexander Bolden. Davies draws attention. He brings the defenseman over Skinner, and that makes it almost a two-on-one from the blue line in for Bolden. He's an option to maybe pass. He's on his forehand, but what a ripper this is. Quick release, and that surprises Simpson. Blocker side, beautiful shot. Boulder getting his 11th of the season for the eighth time this year. Really, the Wolves have scored multiple power play goals in a game, four of them against Rockford. Wow, how about that? <laughs> These two teams will be in action tomorrow night, 7 o'clock. Tune in on the U2. It's already sold out at the Metro Center. Raddy shot off the outside of that and out of play. Shea and Raddy go nose to nose. Everyone comes together on rivalry weekend at the Allstate. I did not see that develop. Well, if I'm the Wolves, I'm a little bit sour on this situation. I'm not sure if Shea took advantage, maybe thinking that Mullane in that incident, because I did not see this uh, start or why it started. Little uh, shot by 
by right. Matty yep. after he took the shot and then pushed a little off. Shea wanted a piece. Okay, here it is. There's the shot. There's the hit. Well, that's an elbow to the head. No doubt about that. And that should have been called, but it wasn't. And that's uh, Shea dropped the mitts before he even had a chance to even talk to him. But that was a penalty. That's an elbow right off the top. That is ugly. So Ty Ratty heads to the locker room with the assistance of Kevin Kaser. Hopefully no further damage. The Wolves leading 5-0. While we were gone, we showed you the players going off the ice. There's 15 feet of concrete that separates the teams heading to their dressing room, and that was not enough for Bobby Shea. Ha! Look at that idiot. You, what were you saying about Rockford? That's ridiculous. What number is he? Uh, someone's going to get that. Takes a lot of hair to do that. And fortunately, the great men that wear the police uniforms here in Rosemont, quickly there. And there's yep. Nightingale and Selleck yep. talking. Yep. Well, Ratty, uh, Kevin Kaser came out to a 10-2 tie Ratty. And we saw the elbow to the head that initiated uh, the whole play. Uh, that could easily be a five-minute major and probably be reviewed by the league. And then he attacked him, dropped the gloves, and jumped on Rowdy, took him to the ice. I'm not sure what happened after that, if Ty was okay, if he hit his head on the ice. But uh, Kevin Kaser came out to attend him. So then after the fact, when, they taken him down, when they're taking him down, he is not to feel him that well. And then Shea takes advantage of that too. Here's the elbow, right to the head, on purpose. To me, that's a five-minute major. That's an intent to injure. And then he drops his gloves without even talking. And gets in a few licks here, and then we'll drop Ratty also. And so Joel Edmondson trying to get in. And then this is Shea after. Boy, that uh, takes a lot there, huh? There's Kevin Kaser with Ratty, so Ty was not uh, feeling so well going down that uh, alleyway or tunnel. Stairs that lead upstairs, and that's where he was put, Shea. He should have put somewhere else, too. Find a shop near you. Billy, there's been a lot of physical activity, some within the rules and some without. As you see the Rosemont police <laughs> earning their paychecks, keeping these two teams at bay before they hit the ice for the third period. Uh, yeah, we stand on guard for thee. <laughs> Selleck trying to hold his own, battling. There we go. And Selleck and Mishinter go at it. Mishinter landed and a quick shot, knocking off the helmet of Selleck. Now tries to work those short jabs. Selleck has him strung up, fires a right. Percy Doe. Yeah, round and round they go. Second fight for Selleck tonight. Mishinter just signing a two-year contract with the Blackhawks. Trying to earn the paycheck the tough way. Some blood on the jersey of Mishinter. Yeah, I true. think Selleck, when his helmet was getting rattled back off his head, probably cut him a bit. Hard to say. It's a tough way to make a living, but uh, guys do it. We step aside Friday night at the fights here at Allstate Arena, 5-0 Chicago. Cross to his partner Skinner has traffic in front and the bodies block it. Led towards long break cut off by Clendenny. Nice play. Now Shattuck has it. Finds an opening back in the slot. They score! Pat Canardi! Six different goal scorers for the Wolves. A two-point game for Canardi. This play is made by Nathan Lonpre and his pressure on the defense as they enter the zone offensively. And Pat Canoni, the end result, will uh, fire this puck. Not a lot on it, but to that ice. Here is that pressure, and Lant Crate will pick it up. Nice little pull and drag move by Shattuck on the back end. Back to the middle of the ice. And pretty good position by Canoni. The defender does not realize where he's at. Doesn't challenge. It's Clem Denning. He just waves his stick at him, and that's a free shot towards the net for Canoni in a goal. 
It's good to see your interview. Karma is coming back to fruition here. Last few players who have been interviewed by you, Billy, have had solid games. Yeah. And I'm sure we'll uh, witness Jason LaBarber tomorrow. Jake Allen leads the American Hockey League with 27 wins. He shares the lead now with five shutouts. Perfect tonight on 23 stops, a 6 nothing Chicago win. Well, that's what I wanted to mention, shutouts. Sometimes John Anderson, uh, I'm not sure what exactly his message will be, but a lot of times coaches, if your goaltender gets a shutout, they'll come right back with him the next night. I'm not sure if that will be the case. Nonetheless, a, a heck of a game. Boy, that first 10 minutes, for hockey in plays was so entertaining. Mm -hmm. 